You're listening to the All American Actors Podcast, Episode 34. In today's episode, I am putting the spotlight on one of my students, Emma Cam. She's going to share with us her experience working in Canada with her All American accent. That's coming up next. Ready to go behind the scenes and learn what it really takes to build a sustainable career as a working actor in the U.S. film and TV industry? Join me, Catherine Beck, your All-American Accent Coach, as I give you the insight and inspiration to take action on your career. Learn my best tips and tricks to performing with an American accent and hear from working actors and other industry professionals to give you a comprehensive overview of this biz we call showbiz. This is the All-American Actors Podcast. Oh, I am so excited to speak to today's guest. But first, let me give a big shout out to Bernard, who says, Catherine's approach to accent training has made a big difference to the way I approach my work. Love the podcast. Thank you so much, Bernard. And I really appreciate what you have to say. I have truly enjoyed working with you as well and getting to know you through your acting. And I wish you all the very best on your career. My approach to accent training is different. And that's because I felt like when I learned accents in the past, there was this giant gap in my learning. A big one being that no one really teaches you how to bring the accent into performance. And so now that is my job. That is what I set out to do to help you bring the accent into performance seamlessly so you're enjoying the performance instead of focusing on the accent. So thank you for recognizing this, Bernard, and I hope you enjoy many more episodes coming your way. And if you've been listening to this podcast and loving what you're hearing, do me a favor, click the subscribe button. If you haven't yet subscribed, tap the five stars and leave us a review. And let me know what you thought of this podcast. Apple loves those reviews when it's ranking the podcast. And guess what? I love to hear what you have to say as well. So if you're loving this podcast and this episode, go ahead and leave us a review. Today's guest I met when she was living in Sydney, and she contacted me to help her with her American accent. We worked together in some private coaching sessions. She enrolled in my online American accent program and then told me she was no longer in Sydney, but now in Canada. Well, she has had a wonderful journey as an actor over there, and I am so thrilled for her to share her experience living and working over in Canada, booking roles with her American accent. Her first role role was on the TV series Supernatural, and shortly thereafter, she booked a supporting role in a U.S. TV movie. I am so excited for you to hear all about it, so let's roll that interview. Welcome, Emma. I'm so excited. Do you want to start by just letting our listeners know a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're located, what you do? (laughs) The age-old question, who are you? It's funny because we get asked it all the time and we live our lives, but I feel like it's the most stumping question. (laughs) Um, I should always have an answer prepared. Well, my name is Emma. Um, I grew up in Sydney, Australia, in the Blue Mountains originally. Uh, Relocated to Vancouver, Canada in 2017, which is where I live now. I'm an actress. I've been doing um, acting since I was 16. I love the outdoors. I love hiking. I love camping. Uh, That's one reason why Canada was such a wonderful fit for me when I moved over here. What were the other questions? I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what I'm most curious about? Because I met you when you were living in Sydney. What was it that called you to Vancouver? What, how did that happen? Yeah, I think I I knew a couple of people who had moved here and originally when they were doing that, it was sort of around 2015, 2016. And Vancouver had always been a, they call it the Hollywood North. So it's, it's just as popular as LA in, in many respects, but it's not the LA kind of lifestyle or the LA status. So it, it often gets overlooked, but Vancouver, especially because it is so close to LA, it is um, an area where there is just an abundance of work. And I knew a couple of people who had started to move over here and said that they would go out for, you know, 10 to 15 auditions a week. And I was like, wow, I get that about a year in Australia. (laughs) So I uh, looked into moving and um, about around 2017, it just really felt like the perfect fit for me as well. I felt that living abroad would also bring some 
um, life skills that I was looking for and just adventure. I'd, I'd moved from the Blue Mountains to Sydney a couple of years prior and I loved that experience of moving away from sort of your little hometown. Um, so like the next big step, which was moving countries, uh, it was a pretty safe step in some respects because, you know, Canada, they say, is very similar to Australia because we're part of the Commonwealth. But it was a mixture of wanting a life change as well as um, an industry boost. And so did you move there with representation already intact or did you move and then seek representation? I was really lucky. The sort of stars aligned for me. I had um, my Australian reps and I also had an LA manager at the time. And we started the conversation around me wanting to go to Vancouver and fortunately, my LA reps had some connections with um, an agency over here in Canada, and they put me in touch with someone. We did a initial sort of interview on Skype when I was still in Sydney, and sort of just did a touch base to see if we felt like it would be a good fit. And then when I came over to Vancouver, we met in person, and we just felt like it was the right sort of groove to fit the rest of the team. And um, I was really lucky in that situation. And so then when you started to audition, was it the same for you as your friends? Did you start having 10 to 15 auditions, just getting thrown into this role and that role? How was it for you? It's definitely different. Like I was talking to someone the other day from Australia and I was saying uh, we both kind of felt that if we went back home now, our game of in, of auditioning has just drastically changed just purely because you're going out for auditions in person um, tenfold. Like I've been going out for auditions for leads in films, whereas in Australia, I didn't have those opportunities at that time. I remember going into audition um, for roles on Home and Away at Mulliners and just totally freaking out prior to the audition, sort of going in there, losing my nerve and after the experiences that I've had here, I truly feel that if I went back home, uh, I would just be a totally different auditioner. I'd be a totally different person. Um, you learn a lot on the job in terms of going to these auditions, not having that much time to prepare for them, the quantity increasing, uh, and you've, you've got to be on your game. And you have to do your American accent all the time. There's very yeah. little, I think I've had two auditions since I've been here where they've wanted an Australian. So wow. the fact that you're doing uh, 90%, if not more, of your auditions in your American accent, uh, it was totally different to at home where they'd be, probably the majority would be in my Australian accent if it was local work. You bring up two really important things that I want to talk about. The first one being, I think that mindset, you know, when you start auditioning that frequently, you go from feeling really nervous in auditions to then it just becoming a work in progress and them seeing you work. And you don't have even time to to think about or feel nervous because you've got to move on to the next one, right? So was, is that... Was that a big factor for you that you started to notice that you were feeling less nervous for these auditions because of the quantity that you didn't have time for, the nerves? Yeah, I'd say it definitely was. I think also, and without sound, wanting to sound pessimistic, um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of actors over here and you're going up against uh, the local Canadian actors who are well established as well as the Americans who are just a stone throw away. So you really go to these auditions and, and while there is a sense of attachment to the role that just sort of naturally happens when you love a piece that you get that you get to audition for, you just have this understanding that it's competitive and there's a lot of people going for the audition and, you know, you can see them there in the room with you and you just have to get to that place where you you just thankful that you're there and you also get to throw your hat in the ring and you're as cliche as it sounds you start to enjoy the auditioning process so it becomes less about getting that job and for me the real mindset kicker was I just want to keep building these relationships I want to keep if the casting director is asking me in countless times especially if it's for the same show that's been running for four seasons now and I haven't booked anything 
but they keep bringing me in for it, that's a really good sign. It's not, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So having the opportunity to audition for all these CW shows that are over here and keep, you know, you keep getting called in, it's just refining and practicing in a sense. And um, when they find the right fit, that's when you're going to get that next gig. Oh, it's so exciting. And what about the American accent then? You mentioned that. So when you went over there, you already had worked on your American accent, but how did it feel then jumping into all these auditions and, you know, 99% of the time is requiring an American accent? How did you go with that experience? I do remember the first few months when I came over here um, really noticing the difference in just, you know, walking around the street. Everyone has what felt like to me, everyone had an accent. Though on the flip side, it would have been everyone else that thought I had the accent. So you start to really, um, your ear really starts to pick up these different sounds. And I, I know people say that when you're trying to learn a different language, it really helps to just immerse yourself in the culture and, and have to just get by when you're in that country speaking the language. And I feel like it's the same with the accent when I came over. Just being around it all the time and hearing, because the Canadian and the American, standard American, are very similar in in many ways. There are definitely sounds that um, the Canadian accent have that they even get told that they're not allowed to do (laughs) Um, and they have to change. But I actually found that that was really helpful. My ear was um, picking up sounds, intonations, easier and quicker when I moved here people now when I uh, call back home they say to me you sound Canadian you sound American (laughs) I'm like no I don't I I sound Australian but it's um it it forces you into this different um sort of atmosphere and you hear it all the time and then you start unintentionally uh mimicking and when I would practice the American accent it just it just clicked so much more than it had at home um, listening to everyone over here. Uh, even the commercials, the radio ads, just everything, everything that you're constantly listening to has this North American uh, sort of stamp on it and um, it just helps so much. Mm, it definitely does. And I think one of, one of the first things that goes, which I think is why – People start saying, oh, you sound, you know, Canadian or for me, oh, you sound Australian when I go back to the U.S., which is hilarious because I don't. But, you know, (laughs) clearly your accent isn't as strong because you do get immersed in the culture. And what that does, I think the first thing that goes is the intonation. Mm -hmm. There's something about intonation which helps you connect to the other person you're speaking to when you can match or mirror their intonation patterns. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, then your family would hear that and go, oh, that sounds different. You know, where are those upward inflections? You sound Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) Very true. Uh, When I speak to my friends or even if I'm watching an Australian TV show, I'm just like, oh, ouch that hurt my ear and then I think to myself why why is that changed so much for me because I didn't Mm. remember that being that way when I was at home so I would 100% agree with you I think that we we do the mirroring yeah conversation so how long did it take you to book your first job once you moved over to Vancouver you can definitely get off the plane get your reps and start auditioning But you do have to build um, a relationship and credibility with the casting directors. So that can take some time. It does also take some time to establish yourself, even just in like a a human sort of general level, finding somewhere to live, setting up a bank account. Like you've literally just landed in the country where you kind of don't exist and you have to start getting this paper trail of um, like a social security number and all those sort of little things you don't think about, and that can take some time. So I think by the time I'd sort of set myself up, I had my auditions, it was probably a good maybe seven, eight months. Okay. And what was your first job then when when you did book your first role? What was that for? Uh, it was a role on Life Sentence. I was playing a, I think the brief said a sassy uh, English lawyer. So it was even an English <laughs> accent that I 
uh, that I had to do. So it wasn't even American or Australian, it was English. Um, but that was really, that was wonderful. It was, it was a big show at the time. It was uh, into season one. I think, unfortunately, it didn't go on past season one. But the production, I just remember stepping onto set and it was, it was huge. It was the, one of the biggest things I'd stepped onto. Um, and it was such a well-oiled machine. Everyone was really lovely. Um, I remember being super nervous. I had to wear glasses in the <laughs> scene and they would fog up because I was like so nervous that I was kind of getting sweaty. <laughs> and I remember just sort of being like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, they can tell I'm nervous, I'm nervous. But um, it was a good it was a, a good project for me to have sort of stepped into. It was it was a juicy role. It was fun, but it wasn't too, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't like I had a lot hanging on me on the role. Um, so it was kind of like nice and easy. I was in and out in one day uh, to, to film it, but it was a good sort of initial step into the Canadian industry. So good. And so then when was, when and what was the first role then that you booked in the U.S. accent? Uh, the U.S. accent, that would probably have been um, – the role of Mandy, and it was for Blue Book Project. Unfortunately, and this is just how it goes in the industry, I, I filmed my three uh, scenes on for the pilot episode, and unfortunately they got cut, so no. I didn't get to see them. But um, I was playing a flight attendant for Pan Am, which was so much fun. It was sort of set back in, you know, the 50s, 60s era, and um, it was when planes had maybe eight seats on them and you, you had like a full cart that you got to push down the aisle that was like really regal and everyone was dressed to their their finest. Um, so it was sort of stepping back into an era that I've always wanted to uh, get to play in as well. So that was kind of a dream come true. It was a lot of fun, actually, that role. I, I would have loved to have seen the, the coffee but it ended up on the cutting room floor oh that sounds like it would have been a really great experience though yeah it truly was so then after that um what what was the next thing that you you booked in the accent did it take a while like you know w- was it sort of consistent or was it kind of up and down where you'd book something and then you, you know, have a lot of time off, a lot of auditioning and then book something again. I do think the momentum between jobs can sometimes lapse and it can be um, a few months before you get the next gig. Uh, It's very different here. I found it very different um, in terms of the commercial market. When I was Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. In Australia, I used to do quite well with commercials. And then when I came here to the st- uh, to Vancouver, the commercials are very similar to the states. Um, I feel like the commercials we do at home and the commercials in England they're similar in terms of like they're almost like little mini movies, they're little mini mm. stories. Um, they're usually quite fun or quirky. The commercials that I was going out for here, they're almost like montages of of footage or clips and then like voiceovers there's a lot of voiceover ads um or sort of medically medical aimed ads and I just found that it was totally different to what we were doing in Australia um and to date you know I've been here for about four years and I've only booked one commercial so Mm. I think that that is a very different market and um I wasn't loving the commercials over here as much. So I've actually sort of stepped away from doing those for the moment. So that's really, that's actually really interesting that it's more voiceover based. So did, have you ever been approached then to do voiceover as well? The agency that I'm with, they do have a voiceover section. Um, When COVID sort of started and in Canada, we were in lockdown for quite some time, um, almost eight months a lot of people started getting into voiceover work and the, the sort of market became very saturated. I have always had an interest in doing voiceover for animations, um, not so much commercials. I think I was deterred by a, um, I was in a webinar and I, I did listen to a voiceover actor. Um, that's what they primarily did and they've been very successful and He was honest and he said, look, it's a really tough industry. And I think if you 
don't have an, the desire to really push and, and to do what needs to be done because it's a lot of voice work, um, it may not be right for you. And I just realized at that time that I didn't have or didn't feel like I wanted to put in what was required and I didn't want to do it, um, you know, 50%. So for me, I just decided that maybe right now that's not my path. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, you have to follow where your heart is and – It's true. Anything that, you know, you want to pursue, I think that's great advice that you need to go at it, you know, 110%, put everything towards it. But the great thing about animation voiceover is it's acting. It's just acting in front of a microphone. That's the only difference is we don't see your face, but it's acting. Acting is acting. And that's the most important part, first and foremost, is the acting aspect of it. Not so much the the voice, you know, that's created. The voice is connected to the character and that character is crafted by you and how truthful you are. You know, our careers have these sort of ebbs and flows and 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 shifts and and I think that's a beautiful part about being an actor is that you don't have to be positioned into one aspect of the industry there's so many different facets and that can shift and that can change and evolve and grow over time which is really exciting yeah I agree with that and I think as well it's um it's encouraged like even my representation here they encourage us to have other interests and to to live a life that we feel content with and that we're happy with because when you are full of love and joy and happiness then that feeds into your work as well so um, my my representation will always be like take a holiday go and explore take that course that you're interested in you know don't feel that you can't do these things um because in doing that, you'll become a richer person and you'll have experiences and those experiences will then feed into the work that you do. So I think that striking that balance and allowing yourself to um, explore those other options if they interest you is, um, I, you know, I would encourage that. That is so true. And the happier you are and the more balanced you are in life, it, it does. It feeds into your work. And, and the casting directors and people that are watching your auditions can notice that. They can see somebody who's enjoying life or somebody who's just completely miserable and stressed out. So it does make a difference into how you approach the work. And I think that's great that your representation gives you that encouragement and support. And I do think that it um, it it helps the gaps sort of feel less intense too because you don't notice that three months have gone by or it's very quiet at the moment because it's summer here in Vancouver and it does tend to die down around summer and then it picks back up around September. Um, we sort of only get three months of the year where there's great weather. So everybody kind of wants to take that time and, and explore and, and go camping or hiking. So it's kind of a nice time as well to have a bit of a break and do those things and then everybody gets back into it in September. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, I think it was not that long after you shot Supernatural that I helped you prepare for a supporting role in a TV movie. And I remember that was a really big step up for you because you had quite a bit of on-screen time and dialogue. How did that feel when you received that role where it was clearly, you know, um, a little bit more than you had done in previous roles. Yeah, it was, uh, I remember initially getting the script and being daunted by the the sheer amount of time I was going to be on set and on camera. And it, you know, it went from sort of these sort of day players um, to two weeks of filming, um, the best friend. So I was in a lot of scenes, even if I wasn't necessarily uh, speaking in those scenes or um, if I had a small amount of dialogue it was intimidating and I remember reaching out to you because I, I thought I want to put my best foot forward I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I should be doing and I, I turn up on set and I feel comfortable and the work that we did together was really critical and crucial to my mindset moving forward for those first few days um I struggle, one of the biggest things I struggle with, and I still struggle with it to this day, is feeling like a fraud when I turn up on set and I 
try to talk to people in an American accent as Emma, there's this weird sort of disconnection for me where I feel like when I'm being Emma, I should have an Australian accent. And when I'm the character, that's when I should have the American accent. It was really hard for me to find the blend of having the accent and showing up as Emma on set. I remember talking to you about that and we kind of got to a an understanding where you had helped me and you said, you know, if it doesn't feel comfortable, just speak with your Australian accent, but then nail the American accent when you're on set. Like you have to work extra hard to make sure that when you get to set, your accent is on point. And so I... I didn't do that on the first day. I was like, I'm going to speak in my American accent and I'm going to, I'm just going to go in and, and be American the whole time. And I, I noticed that it wasn't as uh, daunting and as scary as I thought it was going to be. They only picked me up that I wasn't American because when they asked me where I was from, I said Australia in my American <laughs> accent. Because I didn't know how to lie. I was like, oh no, where do I say I'm from? Because... I was like, then I'd have to create this whole like backstory. So um, I think that that was more like something I was afraid of. Yeah. Um, People didn't actually pick up on it as much as what I thought they were going to. And then you realize it's it's not so hard. Yeah. If you're confident in it, people people just go with it. Yeah. But I making sure that I was doing my practice every single day on set. Prior to my scenes, I would make sure I was doing all my warm-ups. I would make sure I had my cork with me so that I could really get that space in my mouth before I would do my scenes. And when the footage was all cut together and released, I remember I had to go and do a few ADR sessions. And when I got the ADR call, I thought, oh, no, it's because my accent wasn't good. When I got up, when I got there, it was uh, it was only that they needed a few words to be picked up because the sound uh, quality on the day wasn't as good. And so the guys, I remember they were there uh, doing the ADR session and they're like, we had no idea you were Australian. Oh, look at that. Amazing. And they said to me, (laughs) this is like, your accent is phenomenal. And I just kept getting compliments from a lot of people who had no idea as Australian afterwards being like, I, what? (laughs) I never would have (laughs) known. So I felt really good about that. That really, um, I felt so much more confidence once I had done that and tricked a whole bunch of people. But you can only trick people for so long. Once they know you're Australian, like, cat's out of the bag. (laughs) Yeah, you know, whenever, I usually give the advice, if somebody's, you know, practicing speaking on set or just out in public in their American accent and somebody says, where are you from? You can say Australian, just say, I'm an actor, I'm working on my American accent, so I need to, you know, have this time to practice speaking in it. And they'd be like, oh, cool, you're an actor. And then it would just be a whole conversation about that probably. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. (laughs) I think sometimes I would have a few people um, in certain departments want to give me accent lessons. And I would um, thoughtfully take on their uh, advice, but in the back of my head, I was like, no, Catherine's got it down. I'm all good. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it is interesting because you can be American, but it's a hard thing to teach someone else. You know, if it's not, everything's a skill. And so I can honestly say before when I was learning how to become a dialect coach and I was thinking, okay, how do I teach somebody how to pronounce their R's? I actually had no clue because I just naturally did it. That's what I've done since I started talking. But how do you teach someone how to do that, you know, and get them to be able to duplicate that physical movement? That's not exactly the easiest thing to do. So just because of the fact that you sound American, it's a lot harder to teach someone to really inhabit the character. I think it's more about inhabiting the characteristics of how we speak. And that's where the real challenge is. You know, anyone can learn how to pronounce the sounds, but how do you become truthful and believable as that character and really embody it? That's where the magic happens. I agree. And I do feel that being here, um, you do see differences in 
the way that Canadians behave to Australians. And I, I used to watch TV shows and watch them for entertainment. And then when I started doing the exercises from the course where you would watch TV shows and you would analyze them, that's when I really started to see things that I hadn't seen before. Yeah. Um, in a way, it's hard for me to switch that part of my brain off now. Um, I'll look for lighting. I'll look for choices that a character's making. I'll look for little, um, just little things. It could be like looks on their face. Or if I know that somebody is from a different country and they're speaking with an American accent, I'm looking at the way that they use their mouth. I'm looking at the sounds that they're making or I'm hearing the sounds that they're making. And I think by doing those um little uh activities every time you you're just getting better and you're developing it more and it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're making the sounds along with them but even just watching that um I get a lot from visual learning so I find that that's been really helpful for me too yeah I definitely agree that the observation work is so key to really mastering the accent and it's not just um listening, listening is very important, but it's also really is a visual aspect to it as well as looking at how somebody is forming sounds, watching those movements can be really beneficial to you than when you are practicing and looking at how you're forming sounds and seeing if you could even match that physical action. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, this has been so nice, Emma, catching up. It's been so great to speak with you. It's been forever. I'm just wondering if you have any sort of final thoughts or words of wisdom, let's say, for any actors that might be considering making the move to Vancouver, because I do think that it's such a great place for actors to move. You know, Hollywood is fantastic, but sometimes I think for the Commonwealth actors, moving to Vancouver seems to be a great stepping stone. I've always been quite moved by the advice, and I, I know we touched on this already um, that my reps gave me, but I, I really do think that you have to enjoy where you live because acting can take time, as we all know. There's definitely um, more opportunities here, but I think that in moving over um, to another country, it's... Um, it's a big step and there's a lot that comes with leaving everything that you know behind in Australia. So coming over with um, sort of an open mind and an open heart and looking to also immerse yourself in the culture and experience Canada, um, it sort of takes the pressure off as well. So I know that when I first moved here, I was like, I'm moving here solely for acting and that's why I'm here in the country. But it puts so much pressure on you that you don't feel like you can actually just enjoy your day-to-day -day life. So I would say move over with the intention of wanting to build those connections, um, build your resume, but also wanting to experience life in Canada, to experience living abroad, um, because I think that you'll acclimatize a lot better with that sort of mindset. Um, and then, you know, whatever will be, will be. It will either uh, lead to more work in America and you can make the transition over there or it might actually give you um, a really juicy resume and you might want to go back home and do some more work there. Like, really, there's just endless opportunities. I love the idea of endless opportunities. It's very exciting, I think, for the actor. I am so excited to see what is around the corner for you. I know great things are bound to happen. You're such a talented actress, and it's been such a joy to coach you, and I can't wait to see where your career goes from this point forward. So thanks so much, Emma. Oh, thanks for having me. It truly is like um, sort of like a full circle. I, I miss actually being able to come in and do one-on-ones with you. 
Yeah, I know. It was so much fun when we got to work together. And, the, you know, the beauty of it is, is we still have continued to work together, even though you moved to yes. Vancouver, because we still, you know, worked via Zoom, which is great. And these days, it's been a wonderful way to connect to so many other actors around the world and work with them on their accent and um, help them with auditions and roles. So it's, it was great that we were able to do that work together on that TV movie and um gosh I can't wait to see that is there well, a way we can see it yeah I mean it's it's out um it was so whole it was on the Hallmark channel so I think that was a little tricky for maybe Australia, Australia. to get access to I think he ha- probably had to have like pay TV but I'm sure I can find a way to get it to you Catherine <laughs> okay it'd be great <laughs> to see it well it was wonderful to see you and I wish you all the best thank you it's so good to see you too Thank you so much, Emma, and all the best to you over there in Canada. And I've got a big announcement for you today. The doors are now open to All American Voice. So if you want to check out all the details and how to join, head over to katherinebecktraining.com slash AAV. And I will post it in the show notes for you so you can go ahead and check it out. It's just open for a few days, so make sure you check it out before I close the doors. I won't be opening up the doors again for a while, so if you're ready to go and start booking those roles with your American accent, let's get to work. I'm ready to help you and support you and guide you all along the way. And remember, if you love this episode, go ahead and let me know. Take a screenshot of the show, share it on your Instagram story, and tag me in it, at Catherine underscore Beck underscore. You can find me there. If you've got any questions or topics you want to hear on the podcast, just let me know. And coming up next week on the show, I am starting off my voiceover series here on the podcast with a very special interview with the incredibly talented Bob Bergen, the man who taught me how to become an animation voiceover actor and the man who voices Porky the Pig as well as so many other well-known characters. So stay tuned next week for an action-packed episode. Now make sure to share the show with all your actor friends, let them know what's coming up next week, and invite them to tune in with you and learn how to become an all-American actor so you can be the working actor you dream to be. Until then, go practice your American accent, and I'll see you back here next time.